Hello teachers, my name is Dr. M and I'm here to get you started on Google CS First. All right, the website is csfirst.withgoogle.com, which you can always get by Googling. And you're going to start by signing in and you can just use your Google account. As a teacher, you can click the owl and then just choose your school account to log in with. Okay, the dashboard is black. This is how you tell the difference between a student experience and a teacher experience. Teacher is a black and um, the student will be have a white background. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make a new class. And this is your dashboard. It's gonna give you lots of options. You can always get back to it by clicking my dashboard. And you're gonna click plus to get a new class. Create a class. Okay, let's name our class. And ooh, you can choose a pretty color. And you always want to choose CS First Accounts, which is the only option available to most people. And then just click the blue button to create that class. Ta-da! Okay, you have your class name here, you have your class code, which is going to be important later, and you have students. So um, the first thing it wants you to do is add units. So this is just adding the curriculum and you have to choose that first. So you're going to click add CS First Units down here or the plus to add units. Uh, and this is your menu. There are lots and lots of options which you can totally explore and play with and see which one you want. I recommend storytelling as the first thing you do. And you can just click add to class. It will ask you exactly which class you wanna add it to and you can confirm that. And this is an important question. Would you like to receive storytelling materials? So Google will mail you a kit of like lesson plans and solution sheets and stickers. And if you have time to wait for them to come in the mail, totally order them. Click, I wanna order a free kit and put in your address. But if you're starting this right away, don't worry about it. You do not need these materials, they are extra. Okay, so we can uh, look at our class. Now we have class set up and we have curriculum and um, no one's done any progress because there's no students. So we're gonna add some students. On the people tab, it's very small, but if you go up above your storytelling unit, it says units and then people. And you can add students and co-teachers. Co-teachers is great for if you have like a student teacher in your classroom or a parent volunteer or a specials teacher, um, you can add them here. Um, but right now we're going to add students and we're going to create the accounts for our students because they might not have Google accounts. Okay. So I'm going to click on create accounts for your students. And here is where we're going to just type or copy and paste our class roster and first names is fine. So I'm going to add my class in. Excellent. Um, and on the bottom number two says create extra accounts. And this is always useful. Just why don't you throw on one or two extra accounts? They're blank, you might wanna use them later. You can use them for testing and for like pretending you're a student, or you can just add yourself to the student list. Okay, this is the part where you have to be careful because you might lose stuff. You're gonna click create accounts and download roster. And when you do that, it is going to download you a file onto your computer, okay? So it's bloop, downloaded. And uh, I'm gonna open up that download. And here's the thing, this is your only copy of your student names with usernames and passwords. Um, and what I want you to do the first thing is if you click on this and make it a bit wider, ah, your class code was there, it was just hidden. So you're gonna need that too. All right, so this is your list. Every student has their own username, which is just a number and their own password, which most of them should be unique. Uh, and then there's the, your blank ones at the bottom that you can use for testing or later. All right, what I recommend uh, is that you print this out uh, and then take your scissors and snip up all the little lines and give each, um, each password to the student. Um, and this is really great. You can tape it to their Chromebooks or to the inside of like their science notebook, something they won't lose. But always keep a copy for yourself because students will forget their login details. All right, so um, this is just an extra warning not to delete that, that file, save it in a very safe place. 
Um, and if something goes wrong, you just create a new class, put new students in again. Don't worry about it. All right. So here is your roster. You have all your students. You can edit their names. So maybe if she's Blanche W, then that works and that's fine. Um, but the student won't see that. Um, this is just for your records. Uh, there's a username. There's not a password because that would be a security violation. So you have the only copy. So make sure you keep track of those passwords. And then no one started anything yet. Um, so if you want to check up on this person, like if you want to check Blanche's progress, you can click the little clipboard and um, it will show you all of Blanche's projects, but she hasn't done anything yet because she hasn't logged in. So uh, let's look at how your experience is as a student. Um, the important thing is you need to give your students this class code, okay? So you're gonna copy that or make sure you have a copy of it, write it down. It is also in the file you downloaded. Um, so I'm going to sign out of here and I'm going to sign in as a student instead. Okay, so this is just the same website csfirst.withgoogle.com and I'm going to sign in this time as a student. So you're going to click on the cat. And students are going to be tempted to click the first one sign in with Google, but you have to tell them to sign in with CS first because those are the new accounts that you've made them. The class code is that uh, six digit code that you got out of your classroom that is also on your class roster. Kids are going to have to type that in or copy it. All right, and now their username and password. Let's log in as Rose, okay? So her username is 523 and her password is sandwich with no spaces or capitals. 523 sandwich. 523 sandwich. Okay, and there's a little box that says keep me signed in and you can choose whether it's a policy to do that or not, depending on the usage of your computers. There you go. Uh, and you're just going to sign in and she's going to confirm that she sees the right class there. Uh, the class code is always there. So as soon as one kid gets signed in, they can help all the rest of the kids who don't have their class codes uh, and storytelling is pre-assigned. So uh, Rose can just click on storytelling and ta-da, there's a start button right there. There's also, if you scroll down to each lesson, there's a start button and they go in order. Now here's how I recommend you do this. Cause as soon as a kid presses start, they're gonna be given a uh, video about taking a survey. And then the survey is really long and has lots of questions and is too high a reading level for most kids. So the scientist in me says, get the kids to take the survey so we can collect data. But the teacher in me says, that is not a positive first experience for a student in a coding class because it's going to be too hard and frustrating and not about coding. So what I recommend is that you direct them past the survey. So if you go all the way to the bottom, you can click on the next bubble. And this is a video that's great to show all together as a class. Kids can access this on their own, but I really like showing it all together first and then doing the steps and acting upon it because the hardest part of CS First is to get the kids to watch the video and then follow the directions in the video and then go to the next video. That is your main role as a teacher is to get kids to navigate through the multi-step problem. Uh, so when you watch this video, it's gonna tell you to press on the starter project, which just opens up a scratch project for you here. And it's gonna be blank in this case. Now, when kids have followed the directions here, like they've given it a title, they have to go back to their other tab and scroll down a bit and click the next button. That is the hardest part, okay? The next button will give them another video with more instructions. And so if you can model this in front of the class and get the kids to internalize this structure first, everything will go much better for you. Um, accessibility tips. We have some um, settings on here that you can look at the transcript and you can copy and paste um, any of this text into like your Google Classroom if you need extra support. You can set the playback speed to slow because sometimes the people are talking really fast and they go through the steps really fast. Um, also on the video, uh, you will be able to have access to closed captions. Look, subtitles, there we go. Um, you can have them auto or uh, English captions, I don't know. Different videos have different kind of abilities here, um, but you can put on the closed captioning. This video will introduce how to add breaks and 
Try that. There we go. Okay. As well as how to start a dialogue. Exactly. So this is going to read through the video for you with captions and highlight the area in the transcript where it is. You can also click on any of these things in the transcript and it will jump to the part of the video that has that. Okay. Um, one more thing is that when you are in Scratch, you can change the language um, into any of five different languages. So um, if a kid is finding English a barrier, switch it into Spanish. The videos aren't in Spanish, but you can help. Uh, it's easier to understand the blocks and what they do um, if you get to see them in Spanish. Um, okay, I think that is basically it. You've got a lot to do. Congratulations for doing it. You are very brave and you are very capable. And the last thing I have to say is that signing up for CS First makes you a computer science teacher. No matter whether that's like what you teach for your main job, it qualifies you under the Computer Science Teachers Association for membership in their community. I really encourage you to join CSTA, which is at csteachers.org. They have local chapters. You are qualified, you do belong, and they are there to support you. Okay, good luck.